Hi everyone, it's Jackie here at J&D Gardens. If you're a new viewer, welcome. Please support the channel by subscribing. And if you're already a viewer, glad to have you back. Today we're going to be revisiting using a heat cable for your garden. So stick around. Welcome back. Well, it's been a glorious Gardener's Weekend. Now, for those who aren't familiar with the Gardener's Weekend, it's any weekend when it's not raining and not too cold to get out in the garden and get some work done, no matter what time of year it is. And it's incredible. It's the end of January and we've been in the 50s this weekend, so we've been getting a lot of work done. Now, we just finished cleaning out our plants in our greenhouse and getting it ready for the spring growing season. We're adding in our shells and screening out all the soil and we're going to be mixing it with some fresh compost. So while we're doing all that work, we thought it would be a great time to really set up our heat cables in our planter beds. Now if you're not familiar with heat cables, it's a rubber coated wire that you plug in and, we'll, and it'll actually radiate heat that you bury in your soil and it'll help keep your plants roots warm during those cold winter months and it helps them grow. Now there's all different kinds of heat cables. There are soil heat cables that are actually meant for this purpose and there are de-icing cables that are used on roofs to help stop the buildup of ice around the edge of your roof and your gutters. And you know what, a lot of gardeners do like to use those. Now the real difference between the two is that soil heat cables generally come with the thermostat that are set or some that you can adjust the temperature of, you know, when it kicks on. And de-icing cables usually are just set to be on the whole time. But there are ways of adjusting it with timers and thermostats that we'll talk about later in the video. Now, here in the greenhouse, we actually like to use a de-icing cable for a few reasons. Number one, we find it to be a little more rugged so it'll last longer. Number two, it comes in a lot longer length and I believe the one we're using here is about 150 feet long. And number three, they're generally a lot cheaper in price but we'll leave some links to some different kinds for you guys to check out below. If any of you already use heat cables, tell us in the comments below what kind you like to use. Now, if you remember our video from last year, we actually showed you how to add heat cable when you already had plants growing. But since we were cleaning all the beds out, we thought this was a perfect opportunity to really set them in place deep in the bed so that we never have to deal with them again. So here in the greenhouse, our plants or beds are about 12 inches deep. So what we decided to do is to dig out about seven and a half to eight inches of soil from the top. This gave us about four inches of soil bed that we can lay the cable on. So this way, when we add the soil back in and top it off, there's going to be plenty of space for the roots to grow without getting tangled in the heat cable, but still close enough to the roots so it keeps them warm. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. How am I going to dig out all that soil and keep a consistent four inches in the bed so I can lay out the heat cable? And you know what? I asked Dan the same exact question and he said, it's easy. And he made me these templates. And I'll explain how to use them in a second. Now first what you're going to want to do is dig out a bunch of the dirt, kind of eyeing how deep you're, you're looking to go. Now once you've removed enough soil, then you're going to want to make yourself one of these templates. And it's really simple. It's a piece of plywood to whatever depth you're looking to take out 
and in our case it's about eight inches. Then you'll screw it into a one by one piece of wood, the same width as your planter bed, so it can sit on the sides. This actually creates a depth gauge for you. And what you want to do is place it on top of the ends of your planter bed, like this, and you're going to want to keep dragging it along, filling in any low spots, and taking out any extra soil you may have. By doing this, you're guaranteed to have a nice, flat, even surface in your planter bed. Now, once you've gotten to the depth you want in all your garden beds, then it's just a matter of laying out your heat cables. Now, it's obviously going to be different in everybody's garden, but we'll show you how we did ours. So we started at one end, where the power source is, and then we just wrapped it around the entire perimeter, and then came back the same way to where we started. Now, a little word of advice. Measure out as much possible what kind of length of wire you're going to need. Because if you wind up with too much at the end, you just can't wrap it up in a coil because as it heats up, if the wires are touching each other, once it heats up, it's going to melt into each other and destroy the cable. And you definitely don't want that. So, our suggestion is to get some regular rope, lay it out in your garden, exactly how you're going to want it. How many lines, how many curves, how many bends. Then pull it out and measure how long that is. That way, you won't be too short or too long when burying your cable. So now you've laid out your cable, you got them exactly the way you want it. You'll probably want to secure it in some way before you start throwing in all that dirt so it doesn't move around too much. We suggest using regular garden staples. These are most commonly used to hold down ground fabric, so you can pretty much find them anywhere. We'll leave some links for these below. And it's real easy. I'm going to show you in this last bed here. You lay the cable where you want it, and then you take your staple, you poke it into the ground, and if it's too hard to get in, just make sure you have a hammer or a rubber mallet and drive it right into the ground. Remember, you just want to hold the wire in place. You don't want to knock the staple too hard into the cable because you don't want to break the rubber coating on the wire. And another thought, if you have different planter beds that are butting up to each other like, the, like we have here, just bring the cable up and around and put a staple on either end to hold it in place. Now we could have probably just gone through the wood to, you know, so it wouldn't be so unsightly. But if we went through the wood to hide it, and for whatever reason we have to remove the wire, it would be a nightmare trying to pull it out again with all the soil in the bed. So we just showed you the last planter bed, and we're here at the first one, where we're going to power it up. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, we're using a de-icing cable, so when we plug it in, it just stays on all the time but you're not going to need a heat cable to be on all the time. Generally, you're going to want it, you're going to want the heat cable on at night when it gets really cold and shut off in the mornings when the sun's shining and it gets to be about 100 degrees in here even though it's 20 degrees outside. So you have a couple of options. You can use a simple outdoor timer and set it to turn on at 7 p.m and turn off at 7 a.m. when the sun starts coming out. But if you're worried that some days it's gonna be really cold out and there's just not gonna be enough sun to warm up your garden, then you can get yourself a plug-in thermostat. Now they make some that are adjustable, but they tend to cost a little bit more money. Or you can get a simple one like this. And this knows to turn on when the soil is about 38 degrees and turn off when the soil is around 50 degrees, which is pretty standard. We'll leave some links to these below. Okay, so now we're all set, and now all we have to do is fill in these planter beds. So let's get started.
All right, so all of our planter beds are topped off. Now comes the fun part. We get to start planting. And we'll have that extra feeling of security knowing that our plant roots are going to be nice and toasty, sending all that good energy to the growing plant. And also, we can drop down the thermostat a little bit more on our heater so that we're not wasting as much gas. It's a win-win. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. And if you want a pretty inexpensive way to keep your garden warm during those cold winter months, Give a heat cable a try. I really think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. And check out the two videos we did last year on heat cables. You know, in case we missed anything this time around. We'll leave the links at the end of this video. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. We would absolutely love to hear from you. And be sure to hit like and subscribe and ring that bell so you'll know whenever we put out new videos. So until next time, remember, yes we canna.